we quite often get called out to shower pumps that are not working so when you turn the shower on the shower is either not bringing any water in or the water is cold or the shower pumps very noisy or there's no water at all now more often than not it's down to the installation of the shower pump now there's a number of things we need to make sure we do when fitting a shower pump because they if any air gets into the shower pump it will damage the shower pump so we need to make sure we don't get we can do everything we can to prevent any air getting in because the water will cool down the motors on the shower pump and if any air gets in the shower pump motors will overheat and the pump will then seize on the top of the shower pump we've got four connections so we generally have cold water in cold water out hot water in and hot water out so what the shower pump does it draws water in from a tank in the attic and then pumps it out and we'll have a quick look in the attic now so if we follow the cold water in there's a pipe that goes up and disappears off into the attic this is where our pipe comes up it goes into the bottom of the tank the tank gets filled from the top through the ball top so the cold water comes in through this pipe into the tank and then it goes out of the tank through the outlets now you'll have one hot outlet and one cold outlet the cold will come down through the cold inlet pipe through the pump and it'll get pumped out then to the shower ideally the pump the outlet pipe should be, should go back up into the attic and back over to the shower so over the ceiling and then down the wall into the shower valve and then out of the shower head and the shower is on the shower pump should have valves on the inlets and the outlets now these valves should be full bore so that means the valve will open to the whole diameter of the pipe the first mistake we can see here is ice, um, ball fix isolation valves have been used. I'll just show you. There's a lever type full, full bore isolation valve, and we can see that the valve will open to the whole diameter of the pipe. Whereas a ball fix type, it's got a restriction, so the water does get restricted through there. As I mentioned, we've got to make sure no air gets into the shower pump. And the most common problem we see is the hot connection, which should be. An air, what we call an air-free connection. Now this one has been teed into the hot outlet and the open vent, which will draw air in from the cylinder. Now as the water heats up in the cylinder, air will gather along the top of the cylinder. And also, you can't quite see it, but there's an open vent pipe that goes over the top of the tank, which is this pipe here. And if we follow it down, it actually tees in to the pipe at the top of the cylinder so any air can get out up over the open vent. Now the hot inlet should not be connected like this. It should be connected via what we call a Surrey flange or better still an Essex flange. Now what this Surrey flange will do, it will sit in the top of the cylinder so any water needed for the hot taps will go up and straight out to the hot taps but the shower pump will draw water through the side connection and down this dip pipe so no air can get into the shower pump another thing we need to consider is the cold water storage system itself so we can see here the inlet is on the same side as the outlet which means as water splashes into the tank it can draw it can actually draw air through the outlets and also water at the other end of the tank is stagnate you can see all the muck at the bottom of the tank now this tank should also be 50 gallons now this tank has been undersized we need a 50 gallons so the water does not run out another important point is the positioning of the outlets now the hot outlet should always be above the cold outlet so if the water does run out then the hot water will run out first and the shower will run cold. If the connections are back to front, like they are in this instance, then the cold water will run out first and the shower will be pumping just hot water and whoever's in the shower might get scalded. Also, this tank needs to be supported along the whole base. So it needs to be on woods around the whole of the base, ideally 150 mil out from all sides. And the tank should be insulated and it should be 
should be sealed so no insects or no dirt can get into the tank. So we have what's called an overflow pipe which should have an insect screen on it. And we should also have an insect screen on the top of the tank where we'll have an air admittance valve. Also the cold mains going into the bullcock should have an isolation valve on it so we can work on it. We can see there's no isolation valve on this one. Now we can find which pipe the cold mains is in the air and cover. It's usually the darkest pipe because the water's colder. Condensation tends to sit on the colder pipe which will turn the patina on the copper a darker colour. So if you have a look at these two pipes, you can see the pipe on the left is the cold, the pipe on the right is the hot. So that's a little tip for you. So we can find out which, which side is the cold and which is the hot. So if you follow the dark pipe, you can see it goes into this side, which is indeed the cold. Also the positioning of the pump is important. It needs to be ideally at the bottom of the hot water cylinder. Also there needs to be as much height as possible between the top of the shower head and the bottom of the storage system in the attic. If we haven't got enough height, when we turn on the shower, we find out we don't get any water out of the shower. And if we lower the head, we might get water out. In this instance, we'd have to fit what's called a, a negative head pump, which has these two vessels on the side of the pump. Now how the pump actually works is when the shower is opened and water starts flowing through the pump, then it'll knock a little switch inside the pump and tell the pump to switch on. Now if we haven't got any water coming out of the shower head when we open, when we open the shower, then it's not going to knock the switch. So that's why we need the negative head. So we've got pressure inside these vessels. So as soon as soon as soon the shower is opened and water starts to flow through, the vessel will push the water through the shower and knock the switch inside the pump. So if you have a look at this sari flange, we can see straight through the top the side connection goes into this pipe which dips down and allows the water in through these holes. So, this is going to sit in the front of the cylinder there. So, all of the water from the top of the cylinder can flow straight out and over to the hot taps. And the shower will draw water down from about this level where the dip pipe is going to sit in the middle of the water. We've got our flange into the top of the cylinder with our hot water connection coming off the top. We've put this on a slight angle, I don't know if you can see the bubble. So any air in the cylinder can rise up and go up out of the open vent pipe. And then we've got our air free connection, which will be coming down into a valve. And also there's our cold feed going up into the attic. So we'll have hot going to the shower pump and cold going to the shower pump. We've got our four Isolation valves in now, pipe out to the shower pumps in now, we've got the hot and cold feed to the shower pump, and then we've got our hot and cold to the shower, and there's our shower pump in there, all connected up, we've got rid of the two isolation valves, so we've got two showers connected to this pump now, the shower pump is in, just needs wiring up, Systems in and we've made a wooden base along the whole base of the system also drilled the holes following the instructions of where the holes should go really important that we clean up all of the shavings from cutting the holes because all of this muck could get caught up in the shower pump and damage the shower pump so we're going to get the vac on this and clean everything up Cold, cold feed at one end of the tank. We've got the two outlets at the other end of the tank. The hot is 25 mil above the cold, so if the water runs out, the hot will run out first. We've got our overflow 90 mil from the top of the tank. We've also got our air vent and where our open vent is going to go in. If we're working in an attic, we've got to make sure that the tools are all put away as soon as you stop using them because it's so easy to lose stuff in the attic. Also, all nice and clean inside the tank now. No dust whatsoever. Now all the pipe works in. 
we've extended the open vent to go into the top. We've got our screened vent. We've got our overflow with our insect screen. We've got our hot and cold outlets. We've got our cold mains coming in. We've also modified the head of tank cold mains to make things a bit neater. And we've got a service valve on the inlet and a ball cock here. We can now fill up the tank and we can get ready to insulate everything and to flush everything through. As we fill up, we're going to leave the hot tap running just to flush out any air and to flush out any flux. Once the taps have run for a few minutes, we can turn them off and then we can go and flush the showers and the pump. Now is a good time to put the hot water pipe on. It's really important that we flush out the pipe that going to the pump before we open up our isolation valves. It's tempting to skip this step, but it can cause damage to the pump. So we must flush the pump out first. We just undo the inlets to the pump. We take out the washer. Then using our wet vac, we can place the wet vac over the end of the hose. Turn the back on and then open up our valve. and then we put the connections back on making sure we put the washer back in with the filter. Another important stage is to flush the pipework and the pump itself. We need to remove the shower valves to do this. We use an aluminium spanner as to not to scratch the crumb. You can remove the filters from the pipework. As you can see the filters are blocked, so possibly when the last shower is fitted, the pipe it wasn't flushed through, so it looks like we've got some lagging from the attic that's got into the shower valve. Now any muck that gets in the shower valve will damage the shower valve. And also we need to do this to make sure there's no air in the shower pump before we start it up so we don't damage it. Now we can open our hot and cold supplies to the shower pump, check for any leaks, and then we can open up the supplies to the showers. Again checking for leaks. Just wait for the water to come through. If we don't get any water coming through, we've got an A lock where the air is on the high part of the pipe work and we can use a vac to suck the water through. Systems now fully insulated and the pipe work is all insulated so the water should be warm enough now. Plug has been wired in and now it's the moment of truth. Now we can go and test the shower. Got a very good flow to our shower. Job's a good one. Job's complete. We've got a good flow on the shower. Shower pumps working brilliantly. We've got our dedicated hot water supply via the sunny flange. We've got our isolation valves full bore. And we've also got the tank done correctly in the attic with the inlets and outlets on opposite sides. The hot outlet 25 mil higher than the low outlet. The cold outlet, sorry, and we've also insulated all the pipes, and the tank is the correct size. <laughs> 